So, I'm so privileged to meet Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie um, and we're going to talk about her new book and, you know, uh, the, some themes related to that book. We're especially going to talk about identity and, like, who am I based on her book. <laughs> so, I'm just going to just go to the questions because you just answer perfectly. <laughs> so, um, how do you think persons with a mixed race living between different cultures are, de are dealing with their identity? I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> yeah, like for instance myself living here in Norway yeah. with yeah. backgrounds from Nigeria and Norway and even a little bit from America. Um, mm. What's the American part? The American part? Yes. Yeah, um, I'm a quarter from Texas. My father is actually half Nigerian right. and half uh, mm. American, but he's raised in Nigeria, so... Mm. Yeah, How, so what do you, I think, you know, I think identity is what you make of it. Mm. I think, um, and I think it's, it's easier now in this age to, I, I don't know, I'm, because I'm not biracial, I'm not mixed race, I don't know, I don't have that experience, but I think that it can be a very positive thing because it means that you have access to different worlds and, and really you can forge whatever it is you want to forge of your of yourself. I'm always curious about how people self-identify because in the end that's what matters. Right? I think that if you had grown up in, so you've grown up in Norway, if you'd grown up in the US or grown up in Nigeria, your experiences would have been very different, your sense of identity would have been very different, mm -hmm. I think. Yes. So, so how do you think of yourself? Uh, well, I think of myself like I'm really spiritually attached to Nigeria mm -hmm. because I grew up with Nigerian music and my father, he, 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 like, he took me to Nigeria and he traveled with us around Nigeria mm -hmm. and I've been to Nigerian parties and you know, I know uh, my grandmother and mm -hmm. so I, I, yeah, I'm really attached to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So I still feel like a bit of me is Nigerian but both um, live here with the Norwegian culture and yeah. so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can, I think you're both and it's fine. I mean, I, I think, I think we, I think increasingly people keep wanting people to fit a small box and they say, well, what are you? You can only be one thing. I think we can be many things. I have, like, I have, like how you're taking identity in your books, you know, yeah. uh, identity is such a huge subject, like, yeah. and how you're putting it in your new novel, but how maybe those characters in, that are going to uh, now, you know, in your Americana, yeah. uh, moving to the US and yeah. Britain, how maybe their identity are changing a bit yeah. or they are enriched. Yeah, they change, and I think they become, I mean, for me, even the character Ifemele, she goes, she, in Nigeria, she's a different person. She goes to the U.S., she suddenly becomes, she takes on these new identities, she becomes black, mm. she becomes African, mm. which she never thought of in Nigeria. And I think in some ways it was the same for me. We, and when, whenever I go back home, and home for me is Nigeria, I, I become a different version of myself. Mm. I, I, there are things I don't think about, I don't think about race, I don't think about, but then I think about other things, right? So, mm. I, so suddenly I'm very much aware of ethnicity. So I think, yeah, it, mm -hmm. um, yeah, identity is very fluid. I don't think identity is one fixed thing. Mm. But yeah. when are you talking about ethnicity and things like that, how do you mm. think like mixed race people are being uh, seen as in an African context? Mm. Because uh, a lot of people may think that, yeah, or may like see themselves, even uh, Pakistani youths or Norwegian Pakistani youths here in Norway, when they go back to Pakistan, they they may. Uh, they, uh, some other Pakistan may see them as Norwegian and when they are here. Yeah. Uh, well, I think, I mean, but not just that. I don't think, I mean, the Pakistani example you just gave, I don't think they would see them as just Norwegian. Mm -hmm. I think in Pakistan they would see them as kind of Pakistani, kind of Norwegian. Mm -hmm. right? I think if you went back to Nigeria, um, in addition to many husbands coming to ask for your hand in marriage, um, they would think you, I would think a lot of people would say, oh, yellow Ibo girl, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then they'll say, okay, her mother is white, but uh, she's from Imo State. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's still, uh, I think for many Nigerians, and, and the fact that you've grown, grown up in Norway, yes, they'll be like, she grew up in Norway, but really, they'll say, really, she's, just, she's, she's from Imo State, because, mm -hmm. because that's where your father is from, and that's, for us, how identity works. You, you talked about uh, how, uh, a lot about hair and mm -hmm. feminism. Uh, how do you think hair has an important role in our identity? Like, in the point that a lot of black women actually, uh, in the US it has been a debate, uh, that they are uh, bleaching uh, to ch change their skin tone. Like, why should, uh, why should color and skin tone define our identity? It doesn't, but we live in a world where color mm. 
matters, where power is linked to appearance, where the most powerful people look a certain way. And so when you want to succeed, or when you just want to kind of be mainstream, you try to change yourself to fit that. So, I mean, the women who, who bleach or the women who want straight hair or blonde hair, you know, it's not because they're stupid, it's actually because they're, they're trying to adapt to the society. Mm. And I understand that, but I've chosen not to. I mean, it's a choice because I, um, I just think that we should have different, uh, dif that the I definition of what is beautiful and what is acceptable and what is mainstream should be much wider. I, I think that your hair, for example, there's certain jobs that if you wanted to get, they would ask you to do something mm. about it. And and I have I have been told to you should need a relaxer and things like that. So I think that's terrible. And um, so that's really, really the reason I talk about hair is that it's not just hair. It's a, it's a larger thing. It's about understanding that there's a diversity of people in the world and that we don't all have to look the same. And that the way we appear has nothing to do with our ability, um, our mental ability. Mm -hmm. And um, so yeah, I talk about hair, every opportunity I have. I'm also just obsessed with hair. Actually, I should mm -hmm. say with natural black hair, with the hair that stands up, not the hair that falls down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So uh, to the youth here in Norway and in Europe uh, in general, uh, how do black youths uh, become part of the mainstream? Uh, do, how do you, uh, how do black youths get more confident to, you know, uh, be a part of the mainstream but still being themselves as they feel? They uh, should black. I you know this kind of I just feel why shouldn't they? They are mainstream. Black black people are beautiful and yeah. brilliant and so. This idea that somehow the world tries to put people down is nonsense. I, I don't even think about how can they become. For me, they are. That mainstream, I, mm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. For your wonderful answers and <laughs> taking your time. <laughs> Thanks, it's nice to see you, nice to talk to you. Mm. <laughs> She defend